somewhere in the process. Luckily, my son was asleep. I know, that sounds so horrendous. He's asleep. Anyway, armed police have come and they've gone, get on the effing floor. I'm there with my hands behind my head on the floor. They've got a gun to me. I've seen my friend on the bed and his hands completely gaping open where I've done that to him. My little boy's woken up and just, I've just gone, I've just ruined his life. I should have got him out and I've ruined his life. And you could judge, anyone can judge me because nobody will be able to judge me more than to judge myself. I hate myself for it. The Central Club. What's going on, people? Welcome to The Central Club. This episode is brought to you by Reinspire Printing, Lacana Coffee Shop, and Weekend Defender. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the club, and hit the bell button to be notified of future content. This may possibly be one of the most incredible guests we have ever had on the Central Club podcast. Drugs, violence, prison, suicide and addiction. If any of these things may trigger you, I advise you to turn off now. And if not, sit back, listen and enjoy this lesson of resilience and hope. As I warmly welcome... Gemma, or as you may know her, the bipolar journey mum. Bipolar mum journey. The bipolar mum journey. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on, Colin? Yeah. Hi. We're finally here. We're finally here. I know. With sweaty palms, but we're here. Yeah. yeah. How's things? All right. Yeah? Yeah. Um, how's your time in Cardiff been? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, great. Yeah. Is yeah. this your first time in Wales? Or? No, no. I've been to Wales all my life as a kid. So, yeah, not my first time. Okay. So, yeah. Not your first rodeo. Not my first rodeo, sunshine. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Um, I know, obviously, um, on your way down, you went and seen Sean as well. Big yeah. shout out to Sean Big as well. Big shout so, out to Sean. Lovely is, guy. This is your first time actually sharing your story, though, isn't it? Like, this is my first time sharing my story exclusive with Sean and yourself. Yeah. 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 And how did it feel yesterday doing that? Horrendous. Yeah. But cathartic at the same time, mm. so both, yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope this is some sort of therapy session for you. I know yes. any time I ever tell my story, I do feel a bit better yeah. for it, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On cloud nine for a bit, and then yeah, it's... then you dip again. That's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a short lived process. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, you know, from already looking into your story, yeah, I have to respect how strong you come across and how happy you are in yeah. your life. Yeah. How'd you do it? It's all a facade. <laughs> really <laughs> no it's just uh, do you know what it is it's strength and I've got lots of it so that's it you yeah. just got you, you, you've got to let it make you or break you so what do you do and especially if you've got children what do you do you can't let them see you be weak you just can't mm. because they need you so you have to be strong you've got no choice so yeah yeah no mm-hmm. that's, that's good to know yeah okay then so before we start then yeah. I think Talk us about your childhood. Talk us about your upbringing. Like. Okay, so abandoned at birth by teen parents, so I don't blame them. My mum was 17, dad was 16, and then she's gone down the route of addiction, met another guy who's obviously gone through the route of addiction, but there was reasons behind it. So she was adopted from a orphanage at two years old. So, I mean, abandonment issues are a problem. So I think that's what led to her addiction Mm. and also growing up with my grandma her adopted mom my adopted grandma not being very pleasant mildly narcissistic old in her ways resentful from not being able to birth her own children um and then for my stepdad it was the sa and murder of his sister where she was essayed by a guy for refusing his advances at a disco school disco, and then he essayed her and burnt her alive and stamped on her face. So, yeah, my stepdad was supposed to walk her home from the disco, and he didn't, and he had to live with that for the rest of his life, so that's what led to his addiction. Wow. So that all went on, and then they started working for a gang in Act... Uh, Ancoats, sorry, Ancoats in Manchester, obviously selling... Uh, stuff 
and it was just one thing after another from there. You know, it started off with light addiction and then the more that came in, the more they took, you know, the worse the characters came round. Um, I did find it intriguing. I know it sounds really bad, but there were times when funny characters would come round, there would be Gary with no no Gary no nose because he's had his nose bitten off. So we'd all have a look at him and listen to his stories and then there would be Bermuda shorts. Dave, I think he was called, and then he because he always wore, you know, we love to give a nickname up north. So um, there was lots of characters, and although it wasn't a brilliant situation, I did kind of enjoy it, and I did think one day I will be telling these stories. Obviously, there was the bad part. So there was one guy that came, and he'd obviously had a hit, and then had an epileptic fit, kicked the brown all over the floor. My stepdad is going crazy trying to scrape it up. Some other guy's going, grab a spoon. He's going to swallow his tongue. So this big guy's like trying to put a spoon in his mouth. And me and my sister are just like, whoa, what's going on? And then obviously... Hey, you're in the living room at this time. We're just it? in and out of everything. Yeah. Everyone's everywhere. It was like a proper trap house, unfortunately. So everyone's just everywhere. Um, what else went on? There was one time there was a taxer knocking about. So a taxer is somebody that's got taxes people as they're coming out with their what the, their purchases. And then um, my mum demanded that my stepdad go and look for this taxer and give him a good hiding. So they've put a machete down my trousers and sent me out with my stepdad so that they don't get caught with the machete. And he's walked me past this great big pile of blood under the subway with all clots in it and everything. And he's like, oh, we must be going this way. But to me, it didn't phase me. I was like, oh, yeah, you must be going this way. And I've got the machete. So from a very young age, I was kind of drilled. It was drilled into me to like have a weapon or use a weapon or protect yourself or whatever. So, yeah, that was it was lots of little stories. I can't remember off the top of my head all of them. But then it got really bad when like obviously the um, psychosis kicks in when you smoke a lot of white and um you know, just the paranoia between them two would cause so many fights. She would think he was cheating, he would think she was cheating, and then they would just be scrapping and arguing. And it got to the point where it was so, it must have got so bad that I, they went missing. And I didn't see them for like six months. And I've only heard off another couple that used to go down to Manchester to score off them that um, my stepdad had been shot my mum was on the game this that and the other so I've gone to school told my teacher look you need to phone all the hospitals to find where my dad is because he's been shot so my teacher's ringing all the hospitals in Manchester he's at, obviously he's had to call my nan to confirm this to my grandma to confirm this story that I'm not going to school you know making everything up because it was just so horrendous anyway they couldn't find him and then it turns out they turned up on our doorstep like a year later and my dad what had happened and he'd been shot not in the face directly but up so he was on the balcony having a zoo and this guy from this gang um had like spotted my dad's weirdly spotted my dad's dreadlocks over the edge of the balcony and he knew it was him so he shouted Jono my dad's gone over saw he's got a gun move back but not quick enough and it's just pff, split his head open so that was him that was the story of him getting shot but in the process of this uh, my mum was gang essayed by a rival rival gang from my side and they gang essayed her and also the the young guy that was staying with her because at that point in time my, my stepdad was in strange ways. So he's done they've done that to her, that to him. Luckily, me and my sister was at my grandma, so we were safe. But imagine if we'd have been there. I mean, I don't know if they stop at kids, I don't know if they've got rules on kids, but They've took all of her supply. They've put her in a position now where she's got to try and get that money back. They've taken her car, which was a um, an XR3i Escort, I think. Um, but my nan had paid for all the, like, the mod cons on it and everything mm -hmm. else. They've taken that. So that was another story. And there's all bits in between. And I can't, you know, it, I, it's only when I'm writing yeah, yeah. that I can <clears throat> remember them all. But then, yeah, they've come back to Buxton. They've, uh, to my grandma's, they've, somehow got a, a a property in the process but then this guy's turned up on the door from one of these gangs and he's knocked on the door this big 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 guy i've just let him in because my nan ran a, my grandma ran a guest house so i thought oh maybe it's a guest let him in he's come straight darting through to the kitchen where's jono where's jono i'm his probation worker and my grandma was like um a probation worker doesn't really burst into people's houses and he was like you better tell me where jono is to my grandma who's 68 at the time and um luckily like my grandma talked him down and he just left and said, tell Jono he's a very lucky man. 
because he's got away with it. But that wasn't the first time he turned up a few more times after that. But that was another situation. And yeah, that's it really. I, you know, um, that was the main the main parts of that situation. Yeah. And then obviously they were drug dealing in my later teens when I decided to move in with them. And I moved in with them and left the security of my grandma's home, even though she was quite narcissistic. I thought, oh, it's really fun with mum because there's all these young boys coming. I'm 14 and everyone's, you know, well, I don't know, all the nice looking lads seem to be on the the brown. So I was like, well, this is a great place to be, you know. And um, yeah, just... It's a movie, isn't it? Yeah. You know, everything, you feel probably protected by... Yeah. If I'm even though they're in those... Yeah, sort yeah. Sort of danger... Danger. Yeah, I did feel I didn't feel unsafe. Mm. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. You just kind of adapt to it. Like I will tell people little bits, and they'll be like, <gasps> and I'm like, no, not <gasps> because that was just my life, you mm. know. And uh, I don't really feel sad about it. I don't think I do anyway. It was more. Go on. It was more. You, um, did, just just to clarify yeah. that, that thing that happened with your stepdad's sister and stuff. Yeah, was that before your dad ever went to drugs or anything? Yes, that was when they were both very young. I think she was sixteen and he was fourteen. I think you can understand why someone would probably go to drugs after. Absolutely, like that. this is why I'm saying don't judge people for their addiction mm. because you haven't got a clue what they've been through, and it's all very well to judge. But who are you to judge? You know, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And I, and I really want to end the stigma of that. I can't stand it. Mm. So, yeah, that's a big thing for me. Don't get me started on that, Colin, because I'll reel off. Whew. Yeah. yeah. No, that's... Yeah. Like... Yeah. I just can't stand the derogatory comments from people and people humiliating people on, mm. uh, you know, with addiction for... I mean, I'm not on TikTok, but I do know that it's like a posh beg in sight and people do humiliate drug users just to gain clout and mm. money and flowers and stickers and whatever the hell else there is on there. And I just don't agree with it at all. I think it's really, really weak, really pathetic, unfortunately. I just think people should stop doing it. You're definitely on the right platform to talk about that type okay. of stuff because mm-hmm. we are exactly the same. Yeah, We feel the same way about it. And, you know, would we we say we're here to eradicate stigma. Will mm-hmm. we ever eradicate it? I this don't, is it. I don't know, but we've got to try. We've got to try. I had to comment... Before I came to do these podcasts and a friend of mine said to me, you're never going to change anything. And I thought, well, if that's everybody's attitude, we never will change mm-hmm. anything. So I'm going to try whether I get hate or not. You can't hate me more than I hate myself on most days. So come at me, really. Come at me with yeah. whatever you've got. Yeah. <laughs> I love how like um, yeah. passionate you are about it. Enthusiastic. Yeah. yeah, very enthusiastic. Yeah. yeah. So, so what age was you then when the, that was... Pre-teens or was you coming well, into yeah, your teens? yeah, I was coming into my teens then. So, unfortunately, my mental health deteriorated because my mum's mental health deteriorated. Mm. Um, she was then diagnosed with paranoid personality disorder due to psychosis. Okay. It's like an aftermath of psychosis. She split up with my stepdad because she'd started to get on the drink. She'd come off the... She'd weaned herself off the brown... And started to dabble in the drink, which I'd rather she would have just stayed on the brown because it was safer mm. for us. As soon as she started drinking, she became very erratic and volatile and it was just worse. Well, that's what people don't realise as well. They yeah. think of heroin as like, you know, this it's the, it's the end of the world. But, yeah. you know, there's a lot more dangerous, volatile ways that someone could be addicted. Wow. Alcohol being one. Put me in a room full of heroin addicts. One. Heroin's quite chilled. Yeah. It's so chilled. Put me in a room full of heroin addicts over a room full of pub full of drunks any day of the week. Any day of the week. People would think you're actually like ridiculous saying that. Like, yeah. People would be like, what so is she talking you about? So you tell me what happens when you go out on a Saturday night. Is it successful? Really? So it's just a couple of scraps. People, you know, kissing yeah. girls they're not meant to be kissing. Yeah. Or going home with yeah. people they're not meant to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, what happens a in mess. a room full of heroin addicts? You're chilled. I have a bloody good time. That's what. So people can judge yeah. me for that but I've had the best laughs with heroin users yeah. because they're just vulnerable people they've got an issue they've got trauma they've got nothing to prove they've got nothing to prove they're genuine they're authentic mm-hmm. you go to the pub people are inauthentic look at me look at me look at me it's like no mate not look at you you loser so no yeah don't get me started don't get me st- <laughs> Colin don't get me started yeah ah. It's true. Yeah, it's true. so true. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. All right. We we have said, like, you know, you do feel quite safe in those in yeah. those environments. Mm-hmm. But 
at 17, it kind of went a different way where... Unfortunately so, yeah. So I was at a party with friends and then this older bird was hanging around. You know, you get those older people that just hang around with kids. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So she was coming and she had the supplies because she had the money. We're all 17. I'm in college working two jobs. I'm broke. So they're like, oh, well, she's got this and that, but she doesn't like you. Can you go? So I was like, oh, all right, then I'll just go. So I've gone. As I'm crossing the road, this guy's approached me in broken English saying, I can't tell what he's saying, but he's saying something about a lighter. And I've gone, oh, I don't smoke. Sorry. You know, and just tried to scurry off. But the next thing I know, he's grabbed me from behind and um, somewhere in the process, it's a bit of a blur because it's just, I have blocked it out. Anyway, this other, some, another guy's come and they've now dragging me over the road. But because I, they're dragging me over the road, I'm thinking, oh, they're taking me back to the party. It's a prank. It's a prank. You know, it's a prank. But no, it wasn't a prank. They didn't take me back to the party. They took me in another set of bed sits. They dragged me up the stairs took me to a room, small room, where there was like a bed and a stereo and a, a wardrobe. And by this point, there's like more guys have come in. Two of them have held me down. And they've all just took, they've all just took it in turns to do what they've done. I thought I'm not going to get out of it. I'm just thinking, thank you for your ex-boyfriend, not, not the one I'm going to talk about, but a different one. And I'm just thinking, just think of that, just think of that. So I'm thinking of that. And I'm like, I'm not going to get out of here alive. Anyway, they've let me get dressed. He's grabbing me by the collar and he's marching me down the stairs. By this point, I'm just wailing, like sobbing. A guy from the bed sits opened the door. And I thought, shit, if I knew he was here, I would have said, I would have screamed. But I was in so much shock because people said, after, why didn't you scream? But. Unless you've been in that situation, you can't judge somebody. He's pushed me out the door. This boy, this boy has said, "What's going on?" And they've gone, "Nothing, mate. Nothing, mate." And put like shooed him in the door, and like so many of them, and only one of him. Anyway, they've let me out, and I'm just relieved at this point. I'm like, I don't even care as long as I'm out. I'm out. So as I'm walking home, and I'm just running to my mum's at this point, even though it's further away. But I thought I tried to go to my nan's, and it wasn't successful. So I'm going to just go back to my mum's. And then I hear this car just revving up, vroom, vroom, and it's him again, like the main guy. And he's going, get in, just get in. And I'm like, oh, my God. So by this time, I thought, you're going to have to scream. So I'm just screaming, running down the street, just screaming and screaming and screaming. Anyway, I've managed to get home. And I've gone, I've just got in the shower. I've just stripped off, got in the shower and just showering myself. But I left my clothes. I didn't wash them or anything. I just left them in the heap on the floor. And I just thought, just go to bed. Just, 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 just forget about it. Anyway, I've seen, like, my little mum, who was the only person in my life. And she just said to me, you know, yourself, Gemma, what's wrong? Because I'm usually bubbly no matter what. And I said, I've been great. I've been essayed. And she goes, by who? And I've said a lot of people. And she said, who? Like, are you sure? My mum, my mom, but you have to ask, you do. And I said, I know I'm a tear away team mum, but yeah. And she goes, right, that's it. She got the police. The police come out, they interviewed me and scrutinised everything I was saying. They went over it like one two, one or two times, then a third time, and then they went to the where it happened and they'd gone. They'd fled the scene. So they're right there. That's proof. You know, that's proof. It turned into a major case and there wasn't social media and all that in them days. It was Crime Watch. So it was all over Crime Watch. And then they finally got these guys. They were scattered all around London. They'd gone all to different places. They managed to get them all, or at least some of them. There was a letter in the car of one of the guys writing to his dad in his country of origin. saying. We've so done... wait, did, so, yeah. so we were talking about being in like an environment of drug, drug, drug users yeah. and feeling safe. And then, you know, this happened. This wasn't involved with the circle no, he was bothering. No, this wasn't involved in any so, circle. So where were these people? These were not from the UK? No, they weren't from the UK, okay. unfortunately. They from the Middle East. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. So um, all that's happened. They found this letter, one of them writing to a, their father or somebody a, a, a abroad saying, we've done this to this girl. We need, you know, the best of the best, this, this and this. All this evidence stacked against them, everything. But because there's so many women out there and girls that do lie, even with all the evidence, 
they still got off of it. And I was in prison with girls that lied about being raped. And it's like, it's so frustrating to me because it's just, don't do it. Because genuine cases like mine, you go through all that aggravation and all that stress to then be told they can walk free and you're there damaged. And that wasn't the worst of it. The worst of it was Cullen, yeah. Every single one of my friends dropped me. Everyone called me a racist slur saying I'm a, you know, whatever. I brought it on myself because I was a tear away teen. Luckily, my job kept me. But that was the worst of it. It's like, why would you do that? Sorry. And even now, they're all crawling out the woodwork asking me if I'm all right. It's like, no, don't. Just don't. Don't. You didn't want me at my worst. You're not going to get me at my best. You're just not. Sorry. No, no, no. Have a drink of water. Yeah. No, don't be silly. This is um This is this is really sad stuff, but this is real stuff. This well, is Well, this is what led to everything else. I don't blame my parents, I don't. Obviously in the book I'm gonna talk about what, what they did, but I don't blame them. I blame that. There's always a trauma, isn't there? Some sort of trauma. <laughs> There's nothing that could happen to me in life that made me feel a bigger piece of rubbish than that. How did you feel the next morning? Sorry, my contacts quit out. Um, I just, I just, I couldn't believe it. And even going for the test, you know, because they have to test you yeah. to see what's in there. You felt? I, I just felt victimised. I, I was so, like, closed up and tense. It was just like it was all happening all over again. But I know they had to do it because they had to get proof and the proof was there. But you have to do it. You have to do. You have to. If it ever happens to you, you've got to do it that day. You've got to do it that day or that day after. You have to speak out that day. You have to do it. You can't leave it years, and you you, you can't leave it for yourself for years. You you've just got to you. You know, in in most cases, if it happens to you, you do speak out because it's so horrendous. And I didn't feel like I had a massive support network, and I still spoke out. So that's why it's really hard. So in this, how many of them in total would you say? Six. So, you know, that's very brave of you. Mm -hmm. that you spoke out. You yeah. Know, six people. Um, yeah. You know, we've we've done some a, a, re, a recent podcast where someone was accused, and that was one person involved. Mm -hmm. And you know, from her side of the story, mm -hmm. it took her five years mm -hmm. to come out. So for you to get out and do it yeah. there and then, yes, yeah. can't fault that. Yeah. If you know in your heart of hearts they're guilty, you've got a case. Yeah. But it yeah. has to be done there and then because then you haven't got a case, you know? How did this case collapse then? What what, what was like the... Uh... It was just jury verdict. They, jury they verdict. went to court? They went to court. Yeah, I went to court, Crown Court. Oh they we got remanded God. and everything. They were on remand. I was in Crown Court and one guy from the jury come and pulled my mum aside afterwards and he goes... I was forced into that. He said, I believe your daughter. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so sorry. But to just have that one person, it, it did make a difference, but it's like, why didn't you just fight a bit more, you know? Oh, Colin, it was, it was horrendous. It was just sad, man. Do you think those people are still roaming around London now? I haven't got a clue. It's it's dangerous for me to speak out given the status of these people as well. So I'm putting myself at risk again, but I've got to speak out because girls, you've got to speak out. Just don't be ashamed because I've carried the shame. Yeah. For so long. But we we, we this is I'm not trying to like ignore what yours. No. Yours, um, just want to get a, your insight on this. Yeah. We've done a podcast with uh, MC Baseman okay. who was being yeah. accused of um, raping a girl. Yeah. And she didn't speak out about it until five years after mm -hmm. and, and didn't go to the police either, hasn't gone to the police at all. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that case? Would, do, do, what, what, what do you say about that? Do you, have, do you have an opinion on that or no? I can see both sides of it. 
with him being a person of status, mm. it's it happens so much. Okay. And I just on both you sides, know, you mean like someone could use that status to do it, and someone can easily um, accuse because of the status. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think I wouldn't think a person of status needs to at <laughs> sec essay right. anyone. Okay. I mean, it probably it might happen. It might happen, but you hear so many stories. Come on, these are people that do they need to do it? I, but I don't want to. I don't want to diminish anybody's story. Yeah. Because I've had that done to me, so I can see both sides of it. But regarding this girl, I just can't really see. Oh, I don't know. I can't. I don't want. Yeah, to I don't comment. want. To, I don't want to. Yeah. Be in that position. I just. I think what I wanted to. What I wanted to ask you. Do you think it was wrong of us to? Give him his say on that. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because if she's having her say, then he should be entitled to have her his say. And what about if, let's say, you didn't speak out yeah. for five years yeah. on those cases? Yeah. Didn't go to the police? Yeah. Would you be angry if someone platformed one of them? No, because I would blame my... Well, personally, I'd blame myself. Okay. Yeah, because I would think I should have spoke out. If that really happened, then I should have spoke out. It's There's lots of sides okay. to it, because when, when you're a child, it's hard to speak out, so I understand why kids don't mm, speak yeah. out. But an adult... Yeah. Why are you not going to speak out of it at the time, but then you're going to speak out of it on a... Was it... What, how did she put her story out there? Um, social media. No, 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 no. What I, what, she, so she came out with this on social media. Mm. <laughs> no. Are you joking me? She's got to put something so shameful on social media because it is shameful. You do feel shame for it, but she's not going to go to the police. No, I don't understand that at all. Mm. I would not have done that. I'm only telling you, I, I haven't put my essay case in my blog even. You know, I'm telling you guys to end my shame. I wouldn't have put it on social media. Oh, mm. I don't. No, I didn't realise that's how she'd done it. Now I don't. Well, you wouldn't that. have done it there and then anyway, because you did go to yeah, court, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't. You're, have done you're, it. We're I wouldn't put it on social media. It's not something you put on social media, Colin. Why would you do that? And have everybody? No, no, no. That's not how you go about things. I'm sorry, and I'm. You know, I'm sorry if I'm in the. In the wrong, if it did happen to you, I am sorry. But no, you should have gone about it a different way, love. You really should. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what led to... This is just one thing in your That's life. That's just one thing, yeah. yeah. But that was the probably my... The catalyst. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. So I believe, <laughs> you know, something horrific happened after that. Yeah. But for this to happen, was it a relationship you got in... Yeah, so obviously with everybody dropping me, I got into a circle that wasn't really the best circle, you know, because nobody really wanted to have anything to do with me because they called me the whatever, I, you know, I was to blame. So I've ended up getting hey, this... What, what do you mean you was to blame? Well, I was, they, everyone said I'm to blame because I'm um, from, you know, drug addicted parents and, you know, I'm not top of the chain. So I brought it on so myself. So you to get... Yeah, basically, yeah. Or were they saying... You're lying about it. Or... Oh, I had everything. I had. I brought it on myself. I probably agreed to it. I'm lying. Okay. I'm, um, you know, this, that, and the other. Yeah, everything you can imagine. They said about me. So whatever. They they've mm. got to live with that. And look at me now. I'm coming out telling my story, and they have to sit there and know that they said that about me. So whatever. So yeah, to touch on how I got with my ex, um, he was just the only one that showed me attention. So unfortunately, you know, he knew I was vulnerable. He knew my mum was obviously a single mum at this point, struggling with her own troubles. And he's just took advantage of that and reeled me in with the red flags, the love bombing, engagement ring after, what, four weeks? Oh, you know, you're the best thing since sliced bread. I love you. Da, 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 da. So he's roped me in. And then the next thing you know, I'm moving in a house share with him and he's smashing up the place but I still ended up getting pregnant with him after this point. So it was not enough for me to, you know, think of it, think anything. Mm. So, and plus growing up in quite a toxic household, you do kind of think, oh, well, maybe this is just how it is. People yeah. argue and yeah. people smash things up and that's how it is. So yeah, all that's happened. We've got kicked out the house share, ended up moving in with my mum. I've ended up pregnant very early on. I think I was 19, maybe 20 yeah 1920 when I had him 
and it was just he was just horrible. He would stalk me at work, ring my work phone multiple times a day, follow me home from work. You know, if I, I think one time I went to the pub with two friends and I was like, oh, we'll just be really quick, we'll just have one. He's come in the pub. I don't even know how he knew I was there. He's come in the pub, dragged me out the pub. So I thought, right, okay. And it was just one thing after another. And it was like small things at first, but then the beating started. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd wake up in the middle of the night and he's essaying me because all the nasty things he was saying to me, I didn't want to be intimate with him. So then he would have to take it in the night instead. And I'd just wake up and it'd be, he'd be doing it. <sighs> Makes me sick. And then the, just the beatings became more regular, but then he's moved us out of district. So by this point, I'm totally alone. What did he say when you, like, sorry to bring this yeah. up, but like, would he, when you woke up and he would, would yeah. he say anything about it? He'd just stuff? go, I want a bit. And basically you're having it, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because uh, he's my boyfriend, I'm thinking, oh, well, this is how consent. it is. Yeah, yeah, it's consent, you know. So I, I never, I, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I know that now, but at the time, I I didn't think it was that. Mm. And then we've he's moved us in with his stepdad and his partner, and they've already had a no, no, no. His his biological dad and his stepmom. Sorry, okay. Uh, that's yeah, that's it. And then um, they've already had a child taken out of their care for abuse, but I didn't know all this till afterwards. So I was like, "Where have you brought us? Do you know what I mean?" Anyway, we've ended up getting a flat. I've rang my nan. I've said, I need a deposit for a flat because these are two are freaks. I need to get the hell away from them. So my nan's got us a flat. Obviously, he's come with us. I've got a little boy at this point who's now two years old. Oh, well, that was it. He would lock us in the house. He would take the laptop, the phone, my mobile phone. So we couldn't get out of the house. So if there was a fire, I'm screwed. The baby screwed. The boy screwed. And then it was just constant. He started getting on like cider, like, you know, the cheap big bottles of two litre cider. and started, Flagging, yeah. Yeah, started playing like Xbox. What's it? Call of Duty? Call of Duty with the headset thing. You know, one of those little angry kids that won't have a fight in the street, but they'll fight on the flipping headset. And then sometimes he'd just get so angry and I'd just get dashed in the face with an Xbox controller. Yeah. And then this was just bad. And then one time I was out and um, he, I was on the phone to a friend. We was on a, like a night out. It wasn't even a night out. It was just drinks and dinner. I'm on the phone to a friend. He's come behind me, grabbed my hair, pulled me on the floor, started booting, booting me and booting me and booting me. And this was just one of many. And then one time he'd beat me so bad. I was like, right, I've got to get out of here. My little boy's having an asthma attack at this point because of the stress. And I'm like, I've got to get him out of here. So I've rang an ambulance and they've come and gone, oh, he doesn't need to go. And I've gone, no, he needs to go. Like, we, you need to get me out of this situation. By this time, my ex is hiding in the bedroom, pretending he's asleep he's got work the next day, but really he doesn't want to be seen as the stress, the stressor. They've took me to hospital. I've got black eyes from a previous beating at this point. The nurse has looked at me and she's gone, he didn't need to come here, did he? And I've gone, no. Sorry, I don't want to keep crying. And she's handed me a leaflet for domestic violence. And I've gone, I can't take that home. And she's gone, put it in your shoe. Just put it in your shoe. Anyway, it's come to the point of discharge. I've had to ring him to, for a lift because I haven't got anybody else. And he's screaming down the phone, you slag. I'm not picking you up. Why are you ringing me? You know, I've got work in the morning. I'm like, I've got your boy. We're in hospital. Just pick me up. I don't want to come with you, but just pick me up. He's come in the hospital and he's just started screaming at me in front of the nurses. Like, you know, when people are like that, they don't even know, they don't even care who they're screaming in front of. She's just mouthed to me, ring the number. Anyway, a couple of days have passed and I've got the courage and I've got the little my little boy and I've gone to my hometown and I've got in a women's refuge. My mum said, I can't have you here because I can't have him turn. She's already gone through domestic violence. She can't have him keep turning up and triggering her. So she's said to me, look, a tough love now. Go in to the women's refuge, otherwise you'll never go. So I went, and then in this women's refuge, this one, this one girl, she wasn't a woman, she was a young girl, traveller girl, has took my son, after like a week of being there, into her room and refused to give him back, posted notes under the door, get the staff if you want your son back. So the, I'm like, what? So by this point, I'm thinking, my ex is already messaging me, it was Facebook days, and I did have Facebook back in the day. 
and he's going, just come home, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I promise I'll never do it again. And I'm, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do I stay in this hostel, uh, women's refuge where this I'm still being subjected to crap? Or do I go back to women, at least I'm at home and my son's got nursery and all the rest of it. So anyway, he's ended up talking me back and I've gone back. Worst decision I've ever made. Because then, like, he really, really went for me, like, really went for me. But at this point, somewhere in the process, we've made a couple of friends. And they've gone, oh, do you want to come to the zoo and stuff? So we've had a nice day out. The guy who we were friends with has seen my, even though I've piled makeup on, he's seen it and he's gone, has he done that? And I've gone, yeah, and he's like, no, I'm not having that. So I was like, oh, no, what's going to happen? Nothing happened. And then we all went for a meal one day. We've had a few drinks, weren't a good idea to drink. Drink doesn't agree with me either. We've gone back to the flat with the kids. Kids were there, so yes, we shouldn't have been drinking. I know that. The girl that we're with has gone to me. Sorry, can I get a drink of water just quick? Oh, sugar. Take your time. She's gone to me. Come on, let's sneak to the pub. I've gone, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't sneak to the pub. She's like, well, my, you know, my friends are fine with me going, or my fella's fine with me going, you know, let's just go. We'll say we're going to the supermarket. And I was like, let me just ask if I can go to the supermarket. So I've gone, oh, can we go to the supermarket just quickly? And he's been like, oh, yeah. So I've gone, oh, okay. Even though in my head I'm thinking, this is such a bad idea, man. She's gone, right, we'll go to the pub. I've gone, look, we've got literally 20 minutes. Just get a vodka and Coke and drink it and let's go. And she's like, no, no, let's stay. Anyway, so this is 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And I'm thinking, oh, no. Her fella has come, our friend, mutual friends come to find us and he's like your fella's kicking off you need to get back now so as you know no 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 they came with me they came with me but then what she done mouthing off oh we know you ain't your missus blah 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 slapped him so i thought oh here we go so then he's like pushing her back then this other guy started smacking him she's smacking him he's looked at me as in to say oh you're you know Late along. yeah so then I've thought, I'm just going to go back in the house because the kids are in there. I've seen a knife on the floor and I've thought, okay, whose is that? Why is it there? So then I've just seen red. I've picked the knife up because I thought, it's either him or me. And if he, if they, if this fight stops and he comes back in there, I'm done for and this could be the time. So I've just seen red. And yeah, it wasn't a good idea. And yeah, I am in the wrong, but I just went out and I just stabbed him. Yeah, like several times. I don't even remember how my friends got in the way and I've stabbed him. So, yeah, it was horrendous. I've gone back in. I've like, something's come over me. He's run off to the local working men's club, so he's got away. I've gone back in. Somewhere in the process, luckily my son was asleep. I know, that sounds so horrendous. He's asleep. Anyway, armed police have come and they've gone, get on the effing floor. I'm there with my hands behind my head on the floor. They've got a gun to me. I've seen my friend on the bed and his hands completely gaping open where I've done that to him. My little boy's woken up and just, I've just gone, I've just ruined his life. I should have got him out and I've ruined his life. And you can judge, anyone can judge me because nobody will be able to judge me more than to judge myself. I hate myself for it. And then that was it. My mum, luckily my mum came all the way down and she picked my little boy up. But he got him back the same night. And then I'm in a cell arrested on attempted murder. So yeah, that was the story of that. And then when I'm in the police cell, the desk sergeant is coming, like parading all the officers coming onto duty that day opening the flap, saying, oh, look at her, look at... And then covering my charge up and then going, oh, look at her, but it won't melt. There's her charge. So now they're making fun of me. I've not got my son with me at this point. God knows what's happening to me. I'm in a state of disrepair. You know, I'm just thinking, right, despair, sorry. I'm thinking, I'm just going to go guilty because I've done it, so I'm just going to go guilty. Luckily, somewhere in the process, it's listed. I've obviously asked for legal aid and they've took so long and I've just thought, you know what, I'm guilty, I'm just going to go guilty. She's The solicitor has said, make sure she does not put in her plea or whatever until I've had a word with her 
And she said, this is a domestic violence case. There's, um, you know, previous between you and him, you know, do not, whatever you do, say you did it now, you go no comment. And luckily I did. So I went no comment and I got out and I was on remand. But at this point, I'm looking at like eight years. But oh, the you ch- wasn't bailed then, you was on remand. No, sorry, bail. Sorry, oh, you're you right. No, yeah, I got, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you're right. I was bailed. Sorry, sorry. I was, I was bailed. Sorry, sorry. Wow. So I'm on bail, but luckily now it's been dropped to GBH with intent. So it's not attempted murder. It's GBH with intent because it was only his arms and it was superficial. He did go to theatre, unfortunately, and had to have some surgery, but it was like superficial. It wasn't torso and it wasn't anywhere that would, you know, kill him. So the charge has now dropped to GBH with intent. So I'm on bail for GBH with intent. In the process, I've ended up getting with somebody else and getting pregnant. I know that's not ideal, but it happened and he's here and it's lovely and it's, you know, a success story. So I'll go into that in, at a later date. So now I'm somewhere along the line. I'm walking up my street and this guy has come suit and booted in like Ralph I've never seen anybody like of this you know aura before and he's in Ralph and he's like a proper he's like a G you can tell like he's in that kind of and he's shouted to me and he's gone I'm gonna butcher the Cockney, Cockney accent if I do it but he's like all right girl can I have a word with you and I'm like um oh sugar what's going is this like what is this and he's gone um are you that little girl that stabbed her fella and I'm like uh yeah and he's gone I've Got a job offer for you. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's it's insane, isn't it? And I've gone, um, okay, he's gone, get suited and booted and get in that pub in 20 minutes. So I'm like, I'm not a contract killer, it was a domestic, because I'm thinking he's going to want me to start killing people or something. Um, anyway, I've gone to this pub and there's like money on the, on the bench and he's gone, sit down. And I'm like... Um, Okay, sorry, my contacts are um, playing it's up. Okay. Do you want a break? Or... No, it should be fine. No, it should be fine. Sorry, it's because I'm crying so much. I'll need to stop it. Um, and he's gone. There you go. Push this money over to me. That's for turning up. And at this point, I'm like, "What the hell? Like, what is going on? This is not my circle. This is not my world." And he's gone. What do you know about cooking books? And I've gone thinking, "What, Jamie Oliver? <laughs> like, what does he mean?" And then I've I've just styled it out because I'm thinking I'm skin cooking what cooking oh. books so it means frauding the books that's what it means okay. right okay so cooking books is terminology for frauding books I didn't know anything about this at this time I've thought look nowhere is I've been to every interview going in this little town and nowhere's taking me on because I'm known as like the and no lo- one's giving you fucking money to show up to the interview yeah be- yeah 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 it's, it's like a fucking movie that yeah movie. yeah. And then, because I'm, I'm at this point, I'm known as the local stabber. That's what I'm known as. So the stabbing happened just to get this. Yeah. Let's get this timeline straight. So you've left Manchester then by this. Um. Yeah. So he's dragged me down to Bedfordshire, and this is where this has happened. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. and just to go back quickly, the rape at seventeen was in. But Derbyshire. Yeah. Derbyshire. Yeah. 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 Okay. In Derbyshire. Um. Okay. So you've kind of just gone. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. yeah. And then what's happened? Oh, yeah. So I've just taken this money. I've gone back to my boyfriend. He's gone, what's... Well, people don't just give you money. How much? It was only like 200 quid. But still. Yeah, but for, for turning up, that yeah. was a lot. Yeah. And to me, yeah. I was skin. No one's taking me on. So he's done that. And then um, my boyfriend was like, obviously, having a go at me about it. And then anyway, you know, skip forward a little bit. And he's gone, oh, I need you to come with me to this bank. So I've gone to this bank with him. And um, he's gone to the counter to get a substantial amount of money out. The next thing I know, boo, 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 uh, the shutters are coming down and stuff. I'm like, what the hell, bro? I'm thinking at this point, I don't even care if he's a gangster. I'm saying, get, come over here because I cannot be in this position. I'm already looking at eight years. I'm not looking at another eight years for whatever you want me to do. And I'm going, I can't do this. And he's like, the bank manager's come out. And he's like, I told you, you're not to have any more money out of here till I've seen your books. And then that's when I've thought, oh my God, this is a situation I cannot be getting myself into. Do you know what I mean? I can't have eight years and then a fraud case on me. Luckily, in the process, look, I did a bit of PA work. And if he wanted to, uh, you know, a table at a restaurant, I did that and this and that. But luckily my case came up. So it was like, bye-bye. And I went to court and um, I got... 
it had got adjourned a couple of times. They were trying to keep me out of the prison system while I was pregnant, so they didn't have the paperwork. They didn't, you know. But my solicitor said to me, if you want to get on the mother and baby unit, you need to remand yourself, get this process started. So do your guilty uh, plea, just get in there. So the next court case I've gone to the judge, look, I want to get my sentence started. I'm guilty. Just like, get me in there. I want to keep my baby while I'm with me in the mother and baby unit. Let's get the ball rolling. So... Mm. Eventually, that actually went in my favour because he said nobody remands their self. Like, that never happens. So good on you for that and not wasting public money by going not guilty and all the rest of it. So, yeah. Yeah, and then that's it. I'm on remand travelling to HMP Peterborough. Peterborough. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I know Style uh, ha- yeah. has a mother and baby unit. Oh, does well. it? That's where Lee Marvin, one of our previous guests, was oh, born. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He was born in prison. Yeah, so like my son then. Yeah. I don't know about Lee Marvin, I'm afraid, but like I say, I've not been on social media for yeah. years. But yeah, so I had my son in prison, but I'll get to that in a little bit if you want to cover like other stories, like the ins and outs of it. What do you want to do? What do you want yeah, baby well, 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 baby in prison? Like, yeah. So, yeah, it was all right. I mean, I always knew I'd end up there. I know that sounds really crazy. It's almost as if I manifested it. Really rubbish manifest. Yeah, I know. I know. But, you know, when your parents are in and out, not my mother, but my stepdad was in and out of uh, strange ways and stuff. And I always kind of knew, like, I'm going to go there one day. Not very good ambition, uh, you know, I must say. But anyway, so I took it in my stride. Um, The first night, well, they locked me up on a Friday night, so... I don't know what your experience was. So I'm weekend regime in healthcare. So I'm like, this is a doddle. The doors are open. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. You know, walk in the park. Gone to, they finally got me a place on A Wing. Uh, the doors are shut. I'm like, buzzing the buzzer. Excuse me, miss. Nobody's opened the door. She's like, yeah. And have you got a job placement? I'm like, no. She's like, 23 hour bang up. But then I've sat in the bed. I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was a really rubbish thing to manifest, you know? Yeah. And then there was like little stories in between, Um, you know, there was a girl up the way there, up the block where she'd uh, stabbed her partner or no, no, a girl that had tried it on with a partner. So I thought, oh, she was GBH with intent. So I'm saying, oh, how long did you get? This is my case. What do you think? She got four years. So I'm thinking, oh, four years won't be too bad. It's better than eight. So I'm just getting as much information from as many people as possible. And then um, I finally got a place on... C wing, which is the protection wing. So you put your pregnant women on there, your vulnerable people that are and, uh, mental health. And also... Pedophiles. Yes. Child murderers. So pedophiles with the kids being with the, with the bloody pregnant mothers. You know, like, how does that make sense? What about when you have the baby? Do you get moved on? Well, this is where... This is where There's no way they're keeping pedos with fucking babies no, on. No, no, no. So that's, that's when you'll get... But you're there heavily pregnant, but that's when you'll get moved to the mother and baby, which is a separate part of the prison. Yeah. So I'm waiting for this place. Um, What do you want me to go to next? The prison officer ordeal? I think so. Okay. So I'm waiting for this. I'm heavily pregnant at this point. I think I'm like eight months. I'm waiting for my place. Like, am I going to get a place? Am I going to get a place? Because I don't want to give up my baby. I want my baby with me. This prison officer from the mother and baby unit has come to the uh, wing, marching in, swinging his keys. You know, that kind of idiot, you know. And then he's gone... um, I've said to him, oh, hi, are you here to, about my place and the mother and baby? And he's gone, no, like really nastily. So I'm angry at this point, heavily pregnant, emotional. I've seen the SO from the mother and baby and I've gone, you can tell that greasy not to talk to me like that. I was only asking a question. Well, it's the worst thing I could have said because the SO, stupid, immature little man that he is, repeated what I said to the other police officers, uh, prison officers, so now he's got it in for me. (laughs) So he's now trying to stop my place on the mother and baby unit because he's completely... Well, you, see, you can tell him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Narcissistic. You know what I mean? In the highest degree he was. So now he's, you know, he's trying to stop my place on the mother and baby unit. Anyway, I've ended up going through all the stress of everything and you know what the beds are like. They're like yay big with oh, a... Well, bow, oh, bow. Yeah, a tiny bit of metal with a... What's going on, people? I want to introduce you to Cardiff's best kept secret. This is what we call a head shop or some may call it a coffee shop. It's basically a candy shop for those laid back chillaxers who are looking for a natural herbal remedy to offset their stresses from modern life. They got gummies and cookies, exclusive papers and packs, dried herbs and extracts. They got it all. And the coffee is. It is. Delicious. That's a pound, Babs. So head on down now to the Connor on Woodville Road, Cardiff for your CBD, your coffee, and your good vibes. No, no, I don't smoke.
Mattress. Even if you double or triple a MFT, it, it still go like that. Yeah, yeah, it still goes like that. And pregnant as well. So the baby's just smacking the the, wall, the metal the and metal. the wall, everything. So I've gone for my uh, midwife appointment and it's come back with my urine. There's something amiss. The baby's in distress. So by this time, now I'm like getting rushed to hospital in handcuffs, shackled. I mean, that's an experience in itself. So I'm walking in the hospital, pregnant, handcuffed, sitting down. I'm like, can you take these off me? But because I was a high profile prisoner, a prolific, violent offender, um, they couldn't release. They couldn't give you, yeah. They yeah, they couldn't like, service. yeah, they couldn't really release me because with non-violent offenders, they'll release them as they're walking in the door. And she said, we can only let you, we unshackle you once we know that it's, the baby's in serious distress. So I've got all the mothers gaping at me, you know what I mean? Thinking, oh, look at this. I was, I was a spectacle. Anyway, it's come back. The baby's heartbeat is dropping. So I'm unshackled at this point. The baby is um, not, the heartbeat's really, really low. So they've had to induce me. By this point, I'm trying to get the sta- the hospital to ring my boyfriend. And they're being a bit shirty about it because obviously I'm a prisoner. They're looking down the nose at me. I've got two prison officers that I don't know who the hell these people are sitting there while I'm like, yeah, legs spread. I mean, at one point they they did go behind the curtain. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, no, no. At one point they did go behind the curtain. You're not chained though when you're doing all this. No, thank God. So I'm free at this point. Anyway, my boyfriend's tried to say to him, can you just leave? Like give us some dignity and stuff. But at this point, I really don't care who's in the room. You're in labour. You know what I mean? It could be Elvis in the room. I just didn't care. And then the baby's opened the bowels in his womb so he, they need to get him out quickly they're pulling him out with a von Tuss at this point because he's just not coming out the cord's around his neck and she's like start pushing and then they've snipped the cord one time two times so four times it's around his neck they've put him on me he's basically died on me and then they brought him back to life luckily rushed him down to intensive care at this point I don't know where my baby is I've got these two prison officers that are wet behind the ears they haven't got a Scooby Doo, do you know what I mean? I've got no support from them. They've kicked my boyfriend out. He's sleeping on wherever he's right, sleeping. Right, back up. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that was a process. And this guy is still trying to get me my place denied on the mother and baby unit. Yeah, really. Yeah, really. So I thought, you know, I need to get this baby breastfeeding now. I'm like, you need to take me to my baby. I was expressing, obviously, when I couldn't. Sorry, I'm doing the actions. Um, I'm expressing, and then he's um. They've let me come go down and put him on What's the breast. That? So if you breastfeed, well, it's taking away. To... It's taking away your human right. That's yeah. what I thought anyway. And I think some, somebody told me that I can't remember who it was. And I thought, yeah, okay. Well, I was going to breastfeed anyway, but when he was in intensive care, it was kind of like difficult. So I'm like, you need to get this baby on my breast right now. So we've done that, and then at that point, I've been granted a place on the mother and baby unit. I've got to my room. I'm literally. I've had the longest day. It's like seven o'clock at night. I've just got on there. I've got my canteen from what I'd ordered. God knows where me Mintero's bloody melted and well gutted, right? So I'm already wound up. This guy's burst in the room. I'm breastfeeding. He's gone greasy, am I? So I'm thinking, fight or flight. I've got to survive this situation now. So I've gone to him. Oh, um, oh, I didn't say greasy. I said greasy, and it's a street word for cool. I'm just making stuff up now. I yeah. don't even know what that means. But I've just thought, and, he, and he's gone. Oh, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, see, you've took it all the wrong way. You thought I've said it was an insult and it wasn't. You know, that's what tactical thinking. But then I was a, made a rod for my own back then because then he thought I, he thought I thought he was cool. So then he was just on me, on me, coming to the room, coming to the room, coming to the room all the time. And the girls are noticing by this point. So they're resenting me. Why is she getting special treatment? Blah, blah, blah. He's then started taking, you know how hard it is to get your canteen mm. and... He's like coming, taking a big, that bottle of pop's got to last me a week. He's opening it and just drinking out the bottle. I'm like, now I can't drink that because again, I've got OCD with germs and stuff. I don't want to be drinking when somebody else has drunk out that bottle. Well, you think he'd bring some other stuff for you? Yeah. He's going to do that. Well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, get a bit of fucking flipping advantage. He's, well, he was probably just helping this off yeah, to the shit. Yeah, And then he's just, then he's just, uh, I had a rottle, you know, when you get your rottle. Yeah. Uh, uh, release on temporary license. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And um, I've, I've gone out, my boyfriend's met me, we've gone out with the baby, I've bought some clothes, I've sent a parcel in. This is how nice I am, right? I've gone and packaged up a nice parcel for my friend so she's got something to go to the office for to get her things. So I've put her some bits and bobs, some pants and little socks and all that for her. Uh, you know, I've done all this on my one day out. I've got my mate some stuff from the wing who's like skin as well. Come back and he's gone, 
I'm showing him the stuff because at this point, like, I've just got to befriend him. I'm showing him the tracksuits. I've got, oh, look at this, what I bought my boyfriend. We, you know, we try to emphasize that fact. And he's gone to me, I wish that was my baby. I'm like, what the hell? What was he bro? like? Describe what he looked like. And I like. He's on the internet. Did you Did you not? Ew, the, the, the officer? Yeah. His face is all on the internet. What do you mean? Did you not Did you not read my link? I sent you the link because I got him done. I got him done when I got out. No. Yeah, did you read it? No, I didn't. Colin! No, no, you no. You useless. No, I, I didn't see a photo of him. Yeah, his photo was on it as well. The photo was on it. So, uh, yeah. So, let me just skip we forward. See, we need to see this guy. No, don't expose. Don't expose. Don't expose. Let people do their own dirty, like, work. <sighs> No, I won't show on you. I just need to see. Okay, myself. okay. So I'll keep talking yeah, while you. Keep talking. Yeah. So it's the it's the press. I think it's called the press the press article that I yeah. sent. Yeah. And yeah. It's, keep describing. I'm, right. I'm okay. For the he's just smarmy, slimy. He's um. He likes Michael Bublé, so he's up and down the, uh, you know, the halls going do 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 whatever he sings. I don't know what he sings because I don't like my- Michael Bublé. I mean, people can hate me for that. I don't care. <laughs> um. He's one of them, you know, he's the jailer swinging the keys. He loves it. He loves himself. And then even one time, we're, um, me and my friend are walking along, coming back from our place, work placement, and he's gone, everybody in your cells, there's a bomb scare, a bomb scare in Peterborough, in HMP Peterborough. Come on, mate. And he's like, there's a bomb scare. Get in your rooms. He's put, told everyone to get in the rooms, but dragged me and my little friend into my cell. And he's like, we all need to stay here. We all need to stay here till this bomb scare's gone. This guy is unhinged in the highest. So all that's done. Have you seen him? No, go on. Oh, right, okay. And then, anyway, so skip forward a little bit. He's rang, only gone and rang my probation worker and said to her, my probation worker, Gemma doesn't want... You know, you get your HDC, which, uh, yeah, yeah, you know all about that, curfew. home detention curfew. And he's told my probation worker, she, oh, Gemma doesn't want her HDC. Gemma doesn't want her HDC. Are you mad? What? So luckily, you know, my probation worker had like half a brain cell and she, um, she, what, did, the, the, yeah, she cottoned onto the situation anyway. So it's come, he is now at this. It looks like something off footballers' wives, man. But not good looking. Like what? It. Yeah. It's exactly. the hair doing all that. Like. Uh, I can't look at it. I can't look at it, Colin. Honestly, it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> I can't. Anyway, so, um, He's then moved himself off the mother and baby unit to get away from me. Apparently, that's what he told the courts. But where does he move himself to, Colin? My work placement. So now I haven't even got a break from this guy. He's there 24 7 So he's made it obvious then. Yes. And, and did you have uh, a relationship at that point? He was. Did you actually have sex? Yeah, yeah, because he didn't give me any choice. So when, when did that happen the first time, right? Oh, I can't remember. First, it was a kiss. So it was all like, I knew he was getting too friendly. And what, then and he's, what, is he doing it in the cell or like coming into your cell? Yeah, and... coming into my cell. And so what he, he did the first time is he come in, pushed me on the bed and starts kissing me. At this point, I'm like, ugh. You know what I mean? But what can I do? I need that mother and baby placement, yeah? So I'm in just survival mode. Mm. So what can you do? You can't. And what people need to realise as yeah. well, is it, it's, it's, it's not like, what, just go and report it then? Come no, when you're in prison, they would have got me yeah, for it. When you're, when you're in prison, right, yeah. it's like it's its own society yes. in itself. Yes. They are the law. Oh, yes. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm ringing the police. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, they are everything. Yeah. Yeah. You've got your S, you've got yeah. your officers, yeah. your S-O, SOs, your yeah. fucking... Yeah, governors. And it's just yeah. like weird, like, like it's a it's like a click. It's like a far cry away from yeah. You, you could get that help, like oh, wow, so absolutely. I, I can imagine what that was like. And there was already a girl in there. Luckily, I wasn't the first girl. Another girl, he he kept opening her flap when she was getting changed. So I knew I wasn't the only one. Um, and then there was another girl in there. She was actually having a physical relationship. She was a life with him. No, oh, with sorry. another guy. With another prison officer. Really? Yeah. So it happens all the time. I wouldn't say mine was a hundred percent consensual but I was it wasn't like you know uh, 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 an essay did case you, to the you highest think, degree though, did you, when you was in yeah. that did you think oh my god this is not what I expected jail to be like was there any sort of enjoyment with it no oh my gosh no. absolutely not Th- that was it was uh, that is a place where I'm supposed to be rehabilitated he was the only man and I'm angry now I've cried over it too much he was the man to change my perception on men he could have been the one that set the boundaries and bit, you know what I mean? Could have been like, you know, I'm going to look after you as an inmate, yeah, not know. as an object. Yeah. And once again, 
I'm used as an object. Do you know what I mean? I'm already in a position where my boyfriend's not answering the phone and he's missed a couple of visits. I'm fuming, I'm crying, I'm upset. I'm milk leaking from my memory glands. You know what I mean? It's like, do you th- really think I want that? Anyway, fast forward, um, I've got out and I've gone straight to my first probation appointment and she's gone, I just want to touch on something. She's like, I had a very strange phone call from this prison officer saying you didn't want your HDC and I've just broke down and I've said, yeah, and there's a, and a possibility I could be pregnant. At this point in t- no, and even before that, mm. I'm in the, I'm in, in, even before that, Cullen, yeah, I'm in the hostel. They put me in a hostel. He's turned up at the hostel. He has turned up at my hostel. I've said, what are you doing? You need to go. And he's like, if I go, he's delusional at this point. He's like, if I go, you'll never see me again. And I'm like, yeah, hello. Do you know, go, like go. I don't want to see you again. Anyway, fast forward, she's talking to the police station and they've gone to me, well, was it actual, you know, SA? And I'm like, well, he put me in a position where I can't, you know, what if I say no, he's going to be offended and he's going to get me either taken off the wing or he's going to accuse me of something. Yeah, listen, for them, for, for the, to, you know, the way the law look at things, yeah. probably in their eyes, it was probably like a... a, a consensual a, well, relationship. Yeah, it's, it's a sticky one to, like, it's, yeah. it's hard to con- yeah. confirm what this is. yeah. I totally get it from your perspective. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's people in there that do it for fun. They want to do it for fun, but that was not fun to me. But but it's still abuse of power, whether it's for it's fun or not. It's abuse of power, exactly. It's like, you. Why, how sad of a person of you, you're going to get a job as a teacher, a police officer, a prison officer, or maybe a social worker. I don't know if it happens with them. And you're in a position of power and you're just, you're going to prey on somebody that's in a vulnerable position. Like, go to the pub, go on blooming whatever these apps are, Go into Sippy Street and do it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, you loser. They're just losers, Well, that's man. what that woman's done just recently. I don't know the backstory of this, but in my eyes, I'm like, the guy's the vulnerable one, but everybody's got a different take yeah. on it. Well, like, yeah, he is the yeah. vulnerable one, but mm. he's also a lad who's probably fucking loving it. But there's a stigma again, Colin. Yeah, no, you're right. No, stigma, I agree. I agree. You know, I agree. How... So why is he, when he was filming it, you know, and yeah. he was like, this is a movie and, you know, that's why yeah, I thought. Yeah, but he was doing it. But how do you know that that guy wasn't vulnerable making him film it and then, well, at the he, end he of the day, this guy's no. got a girlfriend on the out yeah, I and agree. now her world has been turned upside down. I agree. I agree. So if that's a publicity stunt on that prison officer's uh, no, whatever. I, I definitely agree yeah. with what you're saying there. Yeah. I think from her perspective, the female like, officer, yeah. I genuinely think she got that job. Yeah, to, to do that. To it, the bucket list. Wow. Because she was already a swinger. She was already, oh. she already had like OnlyFans and like uh, rap videos twerking. Oh, shut up. She's one of them. On. Swear on. Get some decorum, love. Get some self-respect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're never going to get a nice man doing that. You're yeah. just... You're just not. No, no, no. She got a man. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. What? He's what? A proper cuck. <laughs> All right. This is just some big black geezer. Oh. Hmm. The thing that confused me about all of it. Right, I really need to. I need to video. do my research on this. Go the on. Go guy on. in the video. Yeah. Who's who's doing the shagging? Yeah. Like they show you his social media. He's like, oh yeah, he's got a social media presence. He's a a, a workout kind of trainer. Okay, but he got done for burglary. Oh, like, uh, okay. I don't. Why is this guy creeping in houses? I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, like he looked like a decent guy. Yeah, he got done for burglary. Yeah. Yeah, I just but we're not, judging. we're not judging. We're not. We're not judging. Whatever. Whatever. I just want to know why. Like how? What was the burglary about? Yeah. 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 And in your ads now. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Sorry. So where are we? Oh yeah. So um. He's he, he's going to leave the... the hostel and never see you again. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then uh, you see you in court. Well, I didn't go to court. That's the that's the, that's the thing. So what happened is. The police said, yeah, you know, it's an abuse. What is it? Misconduct in office? Yeah, I think GDPR, that's... GDPR, is it? No, I don't know. Gross misconduct. Yeah, gross misconduct. That's the one. Um, but my boyfriend is so ashamed of this whole situation and, 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 and the wow. family and stuff. It's like, you know, do you want to drag it through the courts and get your name out there? It's like, he will get prosecuted even if you don't attend. So I can understand it to a degree, but How I would have... How was your partner, by the way? Well, he was furious. I mean, don't get me wrong, he wasn't an angel when I was inside. He's had a little, but he was, a, he was a young kid, so I don't blame him. You know what I mean? He's 20 years old, your missus is in prison with a baby, you know, you've got to make mistakes. So whatever, whatever. 
not bothered. But he was, yeah, he was furious about it. And, and, and even now he doesn't want me to come out about it. He doesn't want me to do these podcasts. But he doesn't get it because although he's had a dysfunctional upbringing too, he just doesn't understand Do why. you speak to him? Do we speak what yeah. about everything? Not really. Because he's heard it all before. He doesn't want to keep reliving it. And this isn't the person you're with now though, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been together 15 years. Oh, this is the same person? Yeah, we've been together 15 years. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. no, yeah. So, yeah, so it's the same guy. We've been together 15 years. Uh, anyway, so he's gone to court and he's gone and made out that I was the seducer. I claimed that we were soulmates. Um, yeah, all the... Uh, it's, it's whatever, whatever you said, you, you, no, you're but, an inmate. Oh, I know, but that wasn't the case. But at the end of the day, he's going to try and get out of it as best he can, so whatever, I don't even care about at this point. Soulmate. Yeah. Uh, but you've got cell to understand. Mate. Yeah, yeah, bloody cell, mate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, look, it's like I was in no position. It's 2010. I've got no eyebrows. It was no eyebrow era. I've got yeah. leaking boobs. Uh, you know, I've just had a bleach baby. Bleach blonde hair. Yeah, bleach, yeah, bleach blonde hair. Yeah. I look terrible. I'm not, in a, I'm not a seducer. Let me tell you, I've just stabbed my... Ex, you know, I'm not a seducer. But anyway, just let him say what he has to say. If that's how he feels better about it, then, you know, yeah. you've got to live with that, mate, whatever. So, yeah, and that was the story of that. At least he was out of office now. And, um, you know, I don't know I how. Where, I wonder where he is. Well, j- listen, this is all coming out with the ones where if he's got to sit there and think, <laughs> it's all coming out. When's she coming out? Now, bit. Nabby. Yeah. What was his name? No, 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 I can't do that. I'm not that oh, much no, of a sod. No, no, no. Yeah. Is it, I assume he was like a Peterborough lad then, if he yes, was Peterborough yeah. jail. Yeah. yeah, well, listen, the link is on my Instagram somewhere along the lines. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you come out of prison? Yeah. What happened when I come out of prison? I can't even remember. It's a whirlwind. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I do, from what I've got down here, Yeah. you know, you basically got involved in some other kind of things in London. When you oh, in London. okay, yeah, so I'm living in London. Woo, North Wizard. So, yeah. So we're... how did that happen? Um, how did that happen? Well, we just like to move around a bit, you know. We just, we, we've we got a bit of, a, I think, a bit of travel in us. Yeah, so we like to move around a bit. Not for any reason before people think, oh, they're just moving around because they're causing trouble. Yeah, run out in the Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, but, yeah, so my boyfriend is obviously from... Um, Kilburn, so we just went back that way. And we've ended up on Chalk Hill Estate. Nice. It was a vibe. It was such a vibe. So, you know, uh, what is it? Grime Daily. Grime Daily. Grime Daily, yeah. I don't want to, but it's Grime Daily, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Grime Daily. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it's Urban uh, Music it's, it's, Company. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Promote artists. So, they've come on our estate to film videos for Lil Shaq, Big French, who else? I think even K-Coke at one point. So my kids and me, we're just like loving it, you know, watching all the music videos being filmed and all that kind of stuff. It's massive, isn't it, kid, the Kilburn Estate? Uh, Chalk Hill Estate. Chalk yeah, Hill. yeah, huge, C- huge. See Biz from there? Don't mm, ask me. See, I'm not going to pretend that I know the dynamics mm. of these no, but, people. You know, Northwest has yeah. got some talented rappers now. The Nines. lyrical content you know? of the music. Mm. It's like, these boys are really mm. clever. But before that as well, like the yeah. legends of grime, North yes. West London. Yes, yeah. Scraps. Flirt, yeah. Flirter. Flirter D. Flirter D. Big up Flirter D. He is the most humble man I have ever met. Yeah. I mean, I've approached... Because at one point in time in prison, I'm ringing up uh, my fellow and all I'm getting is uh, hi bub dish it hi bub dish it I probably yeah. butchered that sorry Hyper vein, yeah. you know and I'm Brand like damage. I'm like what's going on are you having a fit are, you li- are your lips blue are you blue are your lips blue <laughs> I don't know what who Flirt is anyway I've had to listen to uh, you know renditions of this anyway I've seen Flirt in Box Park I've grabbed all the Flirt I've gone oi B you owe me 20 quid a phone credit because I've had to listen to your lyrics for oh yeah <laughs> You know, he could have turned around and been like, "You what? What are you on about?" But he was so humble, and he's like, "Yeah, so you're right. Come in, talking to me, and that and that." And then that was it. Then I seen him bopping all around Chalk Hill. So that's how I know Flirt. So yeah, if you don't know Flirt, go check him out. Follow him on Instagram because he's big. He is like, you know, he's a legend. Isn't yeah, he? and so many people I think tried to steal his flow, and it's like, no, mate, he's the originator. So mm. no, yeah, 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 you can't top Flirt. You can't top Flirt. So yeah, and then you've got oh, who else have we got on there? 
I know uh, Shaq Man, he's just dropped a track. Little Shaq's got a great tune every day. That is a wicked tune. And then obviously you've got Big Fred. Well, I've got a story about Big French, actually. So um, we were at the park one day uh, with the kids and that. Kids have gone, oh, can we go Boss Man's? Boss Man's, a.k.a. off license. So we've gone, as we're walking up, there's a massive commotion at the on Bridge Bridge Road. We're walking up Chalk Hill Road. Bridge Road is there where Boss Man's is on. We've seen a big commotion and like, mm. we've heard a commotion, but I weren't sure was it a gun or not. I don't know. I can't say at this point. My boyfriend's gone turn and run get home now so he's obviously clocked on this is a situation we've got home he's gone back out to see what's gone off it's all cordoned off turns out somebody shot at big french outside boss man's anyway we've gone home and then a few hours later someone's dinged a text round to or a snapchat or something to somebody and it's like craig smalls has been shot on the harrow road in front of his little boy and he's dead Fucking hell. and i was it's so sad man the hot Look, I don't know. I don't even care what goes on, the dynamics of all these lads and whatever else. It's the end of the day. All I see is boys that are trying to crawl out of the oblivion to make a better life for themselves. And then it's just obstacle after obstacle. And when they try and get there, some there's another setback or the system will F them. Do you know what I mean? It's like just these boys are really clever as well. The, the lyrical, Like I said, the lyrical content, the way they put their words across. I wish I had an ounce of their you know talent yeah. it, it, it amazes me and i just think people should just go just go and give them a follow and just stick you know listen to them on spotify stream wherever you can personally so anyway what else has happened in london london we're talking about london oh yeah there was a shooting at the end of the road i won't go into the details but i've um took my kids to the park and then it's all quartered off there's claret everywhere <laughs> And I've gone. I've gone to one of the police officers. Well, I need to get my kids in that park. Is there any way you can just move the? Yeah. At this point, you know, I've just switched off to it, and he's like looking at me and saying, "What? Like, there's been a shooting. What are you on about?" And I've gone, "Oh, whatever." And I've gone, "Come on, kids, let's have a look at the blood." Then we're just going to have a look at the blood. <laughs> so we're just having a look at the blood. I shouldn't laugh because someone's been shot at the end of the day. But I'm just saying that's how you switch off in the situation, like. And then there was another, you know, air, uh, uh, another day, air ambulance has come in, blah, 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 blah. We've all run out to see what's happened. Someone's in a block of flats, had a dispute over music, and he stabbed him to death. So that was another thing. And then the, 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 the thing that broke my heart the most was the two sisters in Frank Country Park. Do you know about that? Bibber uh, and the Nicole. The ones who got found dead overnight. Yeah. Was that near you, was it? That was near us. And we were in Frank Country Park taking pictures of the parakeets two days previous. Yeah, what happened there? Have they found the killers? Yeah, yeah. The, so the killer was found. Um, I think he was a Middle Eastern, Afghan, I think. And he was delusional under this state of delusion where um, if he did this for the devil, he would be granted certain things, I think, like virgins in heaven and money and things like Sounds that. Like, um, what they say in... Is that religion? Yeah, some kind of... Yeah, I don't want to stigmatise it. But anyway, at the end of the day, two girls died here in the most brutal way and I really resonate with these girls because they look like me. They're like cool chicks, indie chicks. I'm not saying I'm a cool chick, but you know. I didn't know they were, they, were they white? No, a mixed race. Yeah, mixed race, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they were just sisters. They had little fairy, like, it just breaks my heart. Little pillows, that. They're just having a free, you know, free spirit. just having a good time to go and be slaughtered. Well, and they, then So they were just sat there chilling. Just they? sat there chilling. Not just chilling, just having a nice break and relax and whatever. And what do the police do? I don't even think the police went to search for him straight away. I'm, I mean, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure... They were left over and like Yeah, I think... Was, was it a family member that found them? I'm pretty I sure. I swear they were left over I'll have to do my research on that. They were like, so, where are they gone? And they went up there and they yeah, were there. Yeah, like. so don't quote me on that. But I don't think the police looked for him straight away. I mean, what does that tell you? But anyway. And then when the police are there, the police have took selfies with their bodies. These poor girls' bodies. This is another... Another p- abuse of power, you know. This is why the system... Metropolitan police view, that is. <laughs> it's all police. Come on. Co- all police, how you know, how many police have you had that have screwed you well, over? Of course, I yeah. get that. But yeah, Metropolitan Police, they have got a certain... Uh, uh, yeah, well, let's just what say that. What was the last straw for you to leave London? The last straw was when my son was stabbed. So it wasn't a knife, luckily, but you know the old school compasses with the quite the long bit on? He's in school. I've got a video I'll show you of their school in a minute. It's terrible. Um... He's gone up. He's gone up to my boy in the dinner queue. My boy is like he's not in this kind of circle at all. He's like just a grassroots kid, you know, just a normal kid. 
he's gone do 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 seven or eight times in his bum. My boy's come back and he's walking upstairs like that. I've gone, what's the matter? He's gone, oh, nothing, nothing, you know, because he doesn't want to snitch. That's the code. And I've gone, what has gone on? And he said, oh, I've been stabbed, but not by an eye, by a compass. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Let me look. And he didn't want to look. You know, he's a lad. I've gone, just move your boxes to the side. Let me see. And he's got four, like, not four. There was like seven or eight little holes. And I've gone, what do you want me to do? I'm like, let me go and F his mother up. Because that was my first, you know, reaction. And he's like, no, mum, because you're just going to go to prison. So I'm like, right, well, how do we approach this? He goes, I'm not grassing. I said, you don't have to grass. I said, but I need to inform the school. So I've informed the school and I've said, look, I know what it's like to make a mistake. Let this be a warning to this boy. Yeah, don't do it again. Because if I had to talk, she was like, take it to the police if you want. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to mess a kid's life up. So I said, look, just have a good word with him and just say, look, don't do that again. Because next time the parent isn't going to be as nice. And I've just thought at that point, I just need to get my kids out of here. It's a war zone. So yeah, that was it. We went and we moved and that's it. We're in East Sussex now. And yeah, life couldn't be better for them. Freedom, you know, they didn't have a lot of freedom in London. And although it's a vibe, the freedom is an issue. So yeah, Mm -hmm. that was the last straw. Did you ever feel like you'd be in the position you are now today when you look back, say... I was... when Listen, when I come out of prison, I was shopping hoodless tracksuits to go back in. I didn't think I would stay like yeah, that. Who knows the score? Yeah, I was like, I need to flip in. You, you know what I mean? I'm gonna no, go back in. No zips or, or yeah, strings. Yeah, that's it. No zips. Because then, when when I've got my stuff in, they've gone. You've got. Oh, I've got to cut the hoods off. I'm like, I'm not making that mistake again. I need hoodless trackies now. So um, yeah, that was it. I was shopping to go back in, thinking I'm gonna get, I'm gonna break my license. I'm gonna breach my license because I'm a hothead. But what I didn't realise was you were only a hothead in a domestic violence relationship. And this is a man that's still causing trouble to this day. He's just, 15 years down the line, he's just dragged me through a two-year court case with another girl that he's beaten up. She's had her children removed from her care because of him. But he's been allowed to go and get in another relationship and have another baby. He's already got them spread all over the place. He's already twisted my son, our son, against me to the point my son hates me doesn't want anything to do with me because of him, because of everything he's put in his head and socials. I've got, I brought the paperwork, it's out Did there. Did your son live with him? He lives with him, yeah. Wow. I've got the paperwork in there because this is why I'm saying I've built a case for 15 years because you know you ain't got no case without paperwork, stacks and stacks of paperwork. And it's all of it, the social services report, how he's abused my boy, how all of his girlfriends have abused my boy. Yeah, and every time social services have said... I'm the perpetrator, I'm the uh, psychotic one, I'm the one in the wrong. And then it wasn't till this very last time that I had a decent social worker, the first one in 15 years, and she said to me, I know, I fully know what you've been through. But then she was in a position where she's had to remove um, the kids from the girls' care. So now, although I think she's a good social worker to the other girl, she's not a good social worker. Mm. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is a twisted of cycle of it all. And this poor girl now, she's rehabilitating herself. You know, she's seeing her kids on a regular basis and she's building back. She's trying to build back her, you know, to get them back. But it's like, how many women is he going to do this to, Cullen, before he gets stopped? How many? And all all we're branded at, yeah. Before he gets stabbed seriously. Yeah, or before he kills a woman. Because it will happen. Well, I think he's probably playing the victim still. Of course like he is. He's, he's, uh, I'm not a, I, she's the one who went to jail for stabbing me. Yeah, exactly. But I've got his psych evaluation now. Ha ha. And he's a diagnosed not a narcissist with grandiose complexities. And oh, there's all sorts on there. So he's like, he's in black and white. He's a narcissist. He's going to keep doing this. Well, that's the system for you. The system yeah. is rigged. And it just screws us over every time. I've had enough. I've had enough of it. it, it you, so through all that life of addiction, mm-hmm. you know, people you've seen addicted mm-hmm. to drugs, you was never addicted to anything? No, no. I mean, obviously, you know, when you go out raving, I'm a raver, a raver to this day. I still go moon dance and rain dance and all that. Some of my best friends are ravers. But I don't do it now. But back in the day, yeah, of course I dabbled with party stuff. I mean, who doesn't? Mm. I mean, no. come on. There's got You've got to be a pretty... Well, I'm a boring person if you don't. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm not promoting. I'm no. not promoting kids, but, you know. What happened to your mum and dad? Oh, so unfortunately, my stepdad, my biological dad ended his life when I was 13, which I was unjustly blamed for. 
um, because I, because I didn't have contact with him. So that was my biological dad. And then so who blinged that? Who said that? His dad, my granddad, but he won't socialise as my granddad. He wouldn't say he's my granddad. So he phoned up her, mm. f- my friend's mother, and said, "This is Gemma's fault for not having contact." So that was an issue. Um, well, yeah, that, that's another thing. Another thing. Yeah, Definitely. that really messed me up because I wasn't able to grieve for my dad because I. Um, was like, I'm getting blamed for it, so how do you grieve? Did you meet your biological dad? Oh, yeah, yeah, loads. We had contact loads, but we lost contact once he had other children with another person. Okay. Um, And then step my... Dad. Stepdad, yeah. So that was the one who his sister was murdered. Um, He recently ended his life with, we think, intentional overdose. People would argue and say it was accidental, but the, he'd had a shower, he'd had a shave, he put on his nicest outfit... It was close to the end. It was near to the anniversary of his sister's death. That's, that's yeah, that's Horrendous, strange. but more horrendous for my sister because I've got a half-sister and she found him. So that's a real sore subject for her. Uh, Mum recently just lost my... I'm sorry. I've like just recently lost my mum. So again, we don't know, was it accidental overdose because she was clean for so long and she just took too much? Tolerance. And you know what the like, oh, sorry, Brown's like at the moment, it's really strong. What would you like the answer to be? Yeah, she took her own life. That's what you would Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, because I know she wanted a way out and I, when I went there the next, the next day after it happened, luckily I was in the area and I went, something was saying, look in the back. And I found all these notes. She was just so miserable, Colin, and why? Because society judged her for being an addict. She felt like a piece of crap her whole life. And you, you've you killed my mother. That's what I see it as. Society has killed her with the judgmental comments. Sorry, I know that's a harsh thing to say. It's not, to... it's, it's not, it's not. But stop judging, man. Just stop it. Stop stigmatising people with mental health, people with addiction. Just stop it. We're already broken as a society. We don't need the extra weight. But the worst thing was... I think broken people, though, broken people yeah. like to, to um, point at other broken people yeah. to make themselves, make themselves feel fixed. Yeah. And I think even my mum did that at one point because there was a comment saying... Um, Pointing the finger doesn't help. And that was, there were so many notes. But when I see her, I seen her in that box, she wasn't a drug user. She was my mum. <laughs> so small. And I was just kissing the coffin. It's just devastating, Colin. Honestly, it's devastating. Sorry. But that's the main thing that's got to me like. No. Because I know she was a sod to me. She was a sod to me at some point. And maybe she has caused some trauma for me, but I loved her despite everything. I loved her. (laughs) Yeah, sorry. It's just a real grievance for me, that one. Yeah. Um, What what would you say to people who probably have got a mother or father in a similar situation who they don't speak to maybe because of drugs? What would you say to those people? It's difficult because I know sometimes you have to cut yourself off for your own sake, but life's too short. Just keep them, keep them at arm's length, but just speak to them and just understand it. And if and for kids as well, if you know somebody that's their parent is an addict, don't judge them for it and don't pick on them because it's unfair. And I had it my whole life and I didn't ever turn on my mum for it. I didn't ever turn on my mum for it. I stuck up for my mum every single time and I just didn't care. Mm-hmm. I would have never turned on my mum. I would have never, obviously I'm talking about my story, but I would never slag her off on social media and call her derogatory names. I just wouldn't do it because she was a human and that's why she's dead. Because of people making derogatory comments about users. Just grow up, man. Just grow up. Don't use it to gain clout and that. Just grow up. Yeah, we've uh, we've actually been sat in this room and spoke to uh, someone about this, Councillor State Queen. Okay. She had traumatic upbringing as well, and, and from that I, I saw a different side to her, but she uses derogatory 
which and it's it's hard you know because i think she is one of those people who was buddied growing up oh, i feel for, way, i sympathize for her and the way she deals with it is in that way buddy, the bullies no, no, okay. to, 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 to probably switch on mum and dad as well. Okay, mama. yeah. That's what it was. And yeah. Was like, you know, like, n- not yeah. mum and dad, but mm-hmm. yeah, they, yeah, they are crackheads. Yeah, yeah, crackheads, yeah, crackheads, yeah, 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 I get you it. Know? I get that. I do get that. Yeah, I do get that. I, I do get that. Must have been hard. Yeah. And I, I got to take my hat off to you for backing mum and dad and not, and not going down that road. No, though. it was so hard backing them, yeah. But they were mum and dad at the end of the day, regardless of what they did. But some people are stronger than others. And some people's situation, like like you say, council estate queen is it. Uh, her situation could have been a hell of a lot worse than mine. And she could really be holding on to the hate because she yeah. her, her experience could have been completely different from 100%. mine. 100%. So she, in turn, is going to be angry at them. And that, if that's it. her way of dealing with it, then that's her way of dealing it. Yeah. And I don't judge for that. There's any consternation <sighs> from someone who's been a drug addict, you, you know. I, my feelings never change for any of my family or yeah. loved ones yeah. or daughter. I love them dearly, even though my, my actions might not have showed mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm sure your mum and dad stepped that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I loved you unconditionally. Yeah. And it did, don't make them bad people yeah. at all. They just didn't love themselves, so how can you love somebody else when you don't love yourself? That's the simple, up, you know, up and down of it. Yeah. yeah. I want to jump on quickly before we do wrap mm-hmm. this up. Um, you have been diagnosed yeah. uh, bipolar and yeah. a sociopath. and sociopath. How is that feel to be called that? Because yeah. the same way we talk about mm-hmm. narcissists, a yeah. sociopath can be looked at in... Exactly the same light. Bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't agree with it, but because I've got a criminal history... You wouldn't agree with it being bad or you wouldn't agree with... No, I wouldn't agree with being a sociopath. I'm too empathetic. You know, there's no... Come on. I'm just... There's no way... I mean, you you don't personally know me, but there's just no way. The only reason that you diagnosed me with that is because of my criminal history, but all my criminal history was domestics with my ex. Mm. Apart from one battery case when I was a kid and I threw a milkshake bottle at somebody. (laughs) It's ridiculous, but... And he shouldn't have got me done either. He could have just said... Accepting my apology, but whatever. Nerd. But I know I'm a nerd. I can't say anything, but anyway. Um, and um, what was it? Yeah, so that's why they've um, branded me as that. So it's the criminal history. It's not, you know, I'm a manipulative or I'm this or I'm yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. There's no other symptoms. There's only this violent symptoms. Yeah. So as antisocial personality disorder. Well, yeah, I can be antisocial, but don't wind me up then. You know, that's... <laughs> You know, it's like, I think that's just human nature. So, but bipolar, yes, I can be low and I can be high. So, yeah, that's, I yeah. would agree. I, and I can't, when I am up, like maybe you'll see me yesterday, I was in a completely different mood. I've been traveling a long time and I'm going a bit loopy in the car. So on the pre the other podcast yesterday, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. but today I'm more common because I'm able to have sleep. So my amount of sleep affects my mood. So today you've had quite an adult person here. Yesterday, Sean, I think maybe had a bit of a wah, 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 wah person. So yeah, I definitely know there's something amiss. But sociopathy is not one of them. Yeah. You know, mess with my kids, I'm going to be angry. Mess with me, I'm going to be a little bit angry. But am I going to yeah. plot to, you know, murder you or take you down? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. This could all be a facade. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, yeah. This story is so fascinating. Yeah. What do you want to do with these? What would you like to do? Have you got any plans that you'd like? I've got no plans. I'm, I've am i been writing a book now for a year. but Just for yourself or to for educate? Myself, you know, I, I want to get it out there. But it's a triggering process. But I just want to end the stigma, really. For kids, because I don't want to be one of those, uh, you know, I don't want kids. I was one of those kids that suffered and st- was stigmatised growing up, and I don't want kids to feel that way. So if your mum is an addict, it's not your fault. If your dad's an addict, it's not your fault. If you're on free school meals, it's not nothing to be ashamed of. That's not your fault. You know, just end the stigma, man. Just stop judging everyone. Just, do you know how much you can build on love? If you're working on hate, you don't elevate. 
and you will only draw in negativity, you know, more nasty comments. But you start loving yourself, loving other people. Just not you don't even have to love your toxic parents if they're toxic towards you, but just forgive them and just understand that they're broken people. It's not your fault. Just forgive them. Just let go. Let go of it all. And you will build. You will elevate so high if you just forgive and don't yeah. go, roll in hate. Yeah. That's it. Do you um do you have any regrets from any of the encounters you have had in your life? Is there anything you wish you didn't do differently? No, because it's made me who I am today. Mm. So, no. I regret not getting my little boy out of the situation, yes. But other than that, no. Do I regret stabbing his dad? Mm-mm. After what he put me through, no. I'm, that makes me a sociopath and that makes me a sociopath. But you don't know what I put up with and these women, you can get them on this podcast, these other women that have suffered as well. Well, you want to see it? we wrap up? So, so charismatic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah? Oh, great. Yeah, I think I think it was really good. Harrison, you, we have to laugh. If you don't laugh, yeah. Harrison said she's really charismatic because I knew he's not going to put her subtitle up for that. Okay, but um, no, um, Jem, thank you for coming. Yeah, like, you, you're welcome. You've, you've inspired me. Thank you for having me. You've made me feel like blown away. Yeah, blown away. Perfect. Um, you're an inspiration as well, by the way, Colin. Oh, thank you. Massive inspiration. Thank Stop you. hating people. <laughs> Otherwise, you got me to deal with. <laughs> I um, we we get guests on with just one of these yeah things. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one adversity. Yeah, you've gone through so many in your life. Yeah, and, you know, if if you was my mother, I'd be I'd be proud of you. I know I would. Don't say, don't be nice to me, please. Honestly, don't be nice mm. to me. I can't handle it. <laughs> Well, That's the best thing you could have said to me because it's one thing I know I'm good at is being a mum and everybody comes to my house and I do the, I braid their hair and I give them advice. Yeah. It's the one thing I know that I've got right. You need a strong person like yourself to be a mother. So I'll oh, tell you that. That's the most, the nicest thing you could have said and to I, me. I want to say as well to your partner as well, like, you know, you are a bubbly character. He, he, he said that he must be an amazing guy. You know, to to put up and 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 to live with these traumas in your life. Take my hat off to him. I met him briefly. Just anything. Yeah, like a top guy. So there is one thing we do with all our guests, and um, we ask him to finish off by giving a message directly to the people watching. It could be about any of these things in your life or everything. You just on the camera. Just don't judge. Just end the stigma. Stop judging and just move in love just trying to eradicate the hate, you know? Just before you add that comment, you're only going to feel terrible yourself after you've added that nasty comment. Just don't do it and you'll feel so much better or find somebody that you admire and add a nice comment and you will feel so much better commenting like a nice comment opposed to a hateful comment. Trust me. Try it and if it doesn't work, then I'll eat my hat, but just try it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you want to follow Gemma, she's on Instagram at... Bipolar Mum Journey. Are you on anything else? No, not yet. I'm just trying to like... I'm an old fossil. I've not been on social media for 15 years. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm winging it. And now look who I'm sat with. Yeah. and you Bloody Cullen over here. And and, and also, there's like... um, I'm really excited to see the book because we didn't even go into things like the affairs and... Oh, yeah. yeah, no, yeah oh, yeah. listen, I've got lots of stories. Sean yeah. didn't even reach some of my stories, so yeah. Yeah, so part maybe two. a part two, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please leave a comment. Get, let us know what you think. Get all the Gemma. Of course, eradicate the hate and the mm-hmm. stigma. And of course, stay central. The Central Club. Thank you.